right now busted. A major New York City corruption probe entangles several local lawmakers. We will have the very latest. And next, we'll bring you to Connecticut, where state lawmakers willing to go much further on gun legislation than D.C. is. We'll give you the details. And then later, the peacemaker, Senator George Mitchell, instrumental in orchestrating peace in Northern Ireland 15 years ago, almost to the day. We'll have his words for advice for the elusive peace in the Middle East. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us this Tuesday evening, April 2nd. And we've got both statesmen tonight, but also breaking news. And we begin this evening with a shocker when it comes to city and state politics. Democratic State Senator Malcolm Smith, who made himself a player in state politics, then was floated as an unlikely candidate for mayor on the Republican line of all places, busted. Charged with paying bribes to make that may all run happen. The whole mess tainting the city's political system and showing just how bipartisan corruption can really be. Let's get to the latest here and bring in a senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And uh, this thing's got a little bit of everything. And you know, Rich, for months, you and I and others have been wondering how and, and why Malcolm Smith, a Democrat, could position himself for a mayoral run on the Republican line. Well, today, we may have found out. Smith arrested by the FBI at his home this morning, charged with trying to buy his way onto the GOP ballot all allegedly through a combination of cash payments and perhaps shady deals to help grease the skids with some of the city's Republican movers and shakers. Front and center among them, this man, Queen City Councilman Dan Halloran. Halloran, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office, was expecting $20,000 in payments from Smith. In exchange, Halloran would ease Smith's path onto the, G the GOP ballot, and Halloran would have become Deputy Police Commissioner under a Mayor Smith. But to get on the ballot, Smith would need the backing of three of the five's borough party leaders, Republican party leaders. And according to prosecutors, Smith may have thought he was at least two-fifths of the way there. Also arrested this morning, Republican GOP cha Chairman Jay Savino of the Bronx and Queens GOP Vice Chair Vincent Tabone, each, according to the complaint, had already received 40 grand from Smith and were expecting to receive another 40 grand. The U.S. Attorney, Preet Bharara, said the FBI placed an undercover agent into the mix, more on the agent's role in a moment, and also recorded Smith and Halloran talking about the deal. In one recording, Halloran seems to be saying the deals were just business as usual. Quote, you can't do anything without the blank money. Money is what greases the wheels good, bad, or indifferent. Smith also recorded by the feds. In one exchange with the undercover agent, the agent tells Smith it's going to cost a pretty penny to bribe the GOP leaders. Smith's response, quote, it's worth it. You know this is a pretty big deal. What's more, Smith has also been connected to a corrupt real estate deal in Rockland County, perhaps to pay the way for the bribes in the way that would pass muster if anyone was looking. That angle leading to the arrests of Spring Valley Mayor Nora Mae Jasmine and Deputy Mayor Joseph Desmarit, both Democrats. Smith was reportedly ready to back a state road project in Spring Valley. That project would benefit a local real estate developer, but that developer was the FBI undercover agent placed there to bust the ring. And yet it all sounded above board to Halloran, at least on another FBI recording. Quote, that's politics, Halloran said. It's all about how much. That's our politicians in New York. They're all like that. They all like that. And they get like that because of the drives that the money does for everything else. Not so, says another New York politician and former state attorney general. Uh, but it is very, very troubling. Uh, we have zero tolerance for any violation of the public integrity and the public trust. Rich? Of course, uh, that the governor, um, and as Andrew said, the former attorney general in New York. All right, let's bring in the panel on this. O.B. Murray, a longtime political consultant, most recently managed Bob Turner's race, was named GOP Campaign Manager of the Year, also managed Sim Caffelder's race for the state senate. We're also joined by Mayo Bartlett, former chief of the Bias Crimes Unit in Westchester's DA's office. Um, and we're also joined by our own Dominic Carter, who's joining us from Lower Manhattan. And Dom, I'm going to start with you. I know we'll talk in a little bit about what happened in the courtroom behind you on the stop and frisk, where there's some developments today. But first start um, with this corruption probe here. What's more shocking to you, um, the nerve of Smith to try this? or the idea that a Howland or anybody else just think this is the way of doing business in New York politics? Honestly, Richard, well, first of all, good evening. Honestly speaking, none of it is shocking to me because money, as the councilman has heard 
talking on one of these wiretaps, money does make politics go around, and that's exactly what the problem is. Let's start with the premise, though, Richard, that uh, Senator Smith is innocent until proven guilty, as well as all the other uh, parties involved, the mayor of Spring Valley, a Haitian-American woman who was recently elected uh, not too long ago in Spring Valley, but all of the officials innocent until proven guilty. Uh, the reason why we say that, because we've seen, well, several officials have been criminally charged, and at the end of the trial, they walked out of the courtroom. So with that said, though, this is a major fall from grace for Senator Malcolm Smith, one-time majority leader of the state Senate, first African-American uh, to hold that position. And now he's looking at this scenario. So, you know, Richard, and, and the reason why I say money is the problem, let's look at what happened when Malcolm Smith was the majority leader. What was his problem? It was the so-called gang of four that decided to challenge him, uh, mostly Latino American elected officials. Well, what's happened with the gang of four? Three out of the four, Richard, are awaiting jail as we speak for corruption charges. So this is a culture that takes place uh, a great deal in Albany. And in Malcolm Smith's defense, he may not, and of course I'm not the prosecutor in this case, but he may not feel that he's done anything wrong, even though that's a hard case to, uh, to argue. Well, that's a perfect segue for me, Don. Hey, Don, that's a perfect segue to bring in.